Hey guys, it's a Saturday night here and this is night or day six of my 30 day Facebook live challenge. If you're wondering what in the world that means, that means that I have committed to go live here on my Facebook page 30 days in a row with you guys. And um, this is day number six. So I hope that you guys will join me for a few minutes and ask questions if you will. Uh, so tonight, I just told you guys that I would come live with you and share my story. So I am freshly faced, washed, and I took a walk this evening and got all sweaty. I had gnats like sticking in my eyeballs as I was walking. I was so sweaty. And it, you know how when it gets close to dusk, all the bugs come out? Well, that's what it was, was happening on my walk tonight. And I had gnat, a gnat or two fly in my eye. And so as soon as I came home, I had to get a shower. And so... Uh, you guys caught me with no makeup on, but I hope that's all right with y'all. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Heather and Diana. I did make it, didn't I? Hey, Vicki. So, this is day six, and even though um, I would love nothing more than, than to just, like, lay down, veg out, and watch some Netflix, because in case y'all didn't know, season two of Outer Banks is out on Netflix. It's such a good show. I will talk more about that in a minute. But even though I would love no, nothing, nothing more than to veg out on Netflix tonight, I promised you guys that I would come live today to share my story. And so I'm here to hold up my end of the bargain. Hey, Julie, she says, tell us a story. Okay, we'll start in just a second. Uh, Gina says, gnats in my pool. Oh goodness, well these gnats were like flying and then they would stick to the sweat on my face and then I had a couple of them fly directly in my eye. I had to stop and get my cell phone out and turn the camera on to find the gnat in my eye. It was very disturbing. Hey, Shonda, good, good evening from Georgia. Hey, Robin. Uh, April says, I finally made it to one of your lives. I'm so glad. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Um, okay. If you didn't get a text letting you know that I was going live tonight, you can get text notifications um, when I go live because for the next um, 24 more days, I'll be going live once a day for 30 days. So if you want to get notified, feel free to text my number or if you have questions or whatever, I'm, I'm the one who checks and responds to those. So you can text me at any time. Becky says, I'm afraid to hear your story again. It makes me want to be Tamara. <laughs> oh goodness, Becky. Well, I don't, I don't want you to be me. I want you to be Becky, but there's no reason why some of you guys can't um, start making money with door hangers if you haven't started already, because my beginnings were very humble. Like there was no like amazing things that I did in the very beginning or even halfway through that just suddenly made me grow. I think the keys to my growth were consistency and keeping promises to my business. So if I promised my business I was going to show up 30 days live in a row, I kept that promise. Arlene says she loves Outer Banks. Okay, so if you have not watched the TV show Outer Banks on Netflix, that's what I've been binge watching this weekend. The second season just came out Friday night or Friday. And it's just, it's, it's a really good like adventure story of some teenage kids who are kind of like got bad guys chasing them. It's got a real like modern day Goonies vibe. So if you loved the Goonies movie, you would love the Outer Banks. Oh, thank you, Lynn. I do have tattooed eyeliner on. That's a whole nother story. So that's the only makeup I got on, I got on tonight. Gina says, I'll text you at 4 a.m., but that specific time. That's okay. I have, te like, all of that's on do not disturb mode when I sleep. So it does not going to bother me if you text me at 4 a.m. Tony says she lives in Cal Calvert City. I am between Benton and Murray. So we're pretty close together. Uh, hey, Amanda. She's finally getting to watch. She's usually at work. Well, I'm glad you're able to watch. Sometimes I go live. Most of the time I go live during the day, but this is in the evening. So let's get started. Um, Lynn, if you can hear me, but you can't see me, try closing out your Facebook app completely and come back in. It should refresh everything. Hey, Cheryl. So my story starts out. Oh, goodness. Let's see how far we're going to dial it back. Oh, it just started raining here. That was unusual. <laughs> Um, but anyway, <laughs> Shelly, oh, I, I must be important if you paused Virgin River to watch me because I binge watched Virgin River like in a weekend. Anyways, back in 2013, my husband was in the military and he was deployed and I was at home with my two little boys, Brett and Travis. I didn't have Charlie yet. And at the time, Brett was three, Travis was six, I believe, or seven. He was seven. 
And let me tell you, Brett is the middle child, right? He's the one that had to have brain surgery back in 2018. If you guys have followed me that long, you remember we have spent a little over a week in Norton's Children's Hospital in Louisville back in 2018. No worries, he's completely fine now. He ended up having um, hydrocephalus in his brain and he had to have a shunt placed and that shunt has uh, fixed the problem. So we really haven't had, had very many issues since then. So don't worry about him. But this is a like a different version of Brett than you guys know. You guys know the really sweet Brett who's kind of quiet. He makes friends really easily. He's a peacemaker. He's like a teacher's pet. He's the perfect little child. Now, <laughs> I say now with like an asterisk next to it. He'll be 11 in September. So dial it back to 2013 when he was three. My husband's deployed, mind you, for I think he was gone for eight to nine months. Like it's hard to like quantify it exactly because he was gone for like a training here. He'd be home for a weekend, another training, and then he was gone for like seven months straight. But all in all, I think it totaled up to like nine months and it was a long time. And I was at home with my two little boys, Travis who was seven and Brett who was three. And Brett was going through, I wanna say the terrible twos at three, but it was like, I don't know, none of my other children have ever been this way, but he was the kind of kid that if he got quiet, you had to worry. Like if, if, if he got quiet and I didn't notice what he was up to, all of a sudden I've had this like moment of fear striking inside of me because I'm like, <gasps> what is he into? To, perfect example, if you guys have never heard this story before, and I'm getting around to the business part, but this, this sets the scene, right? Of like what my life was like before my business began. Um, so one time Brett got into the kitchen cabinet, unbeknownst to me, yeah, definitely, definitely a middle child, Beth. He went and got the food coloring packages, liquid food coloring. And I don't know what he, I don't know what his little three-year-old old brain thought they were or what he was going to do with them, but he took them to his bedroom or the, actually it was the playroom at the time. And he took the caps off of them and he drip, 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 drip about a million little drips till those bottles were empty all over the playroom. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly's being generous. She said he was being artistic, maybe. So most of it was in the carpet. Some of it was on uh, the dresser, which that was way easier to clean up. But I was like, I don't know what I was doing. I was probably trying to like binge watch something on TV and just like zone out for a bit. And here he comes and he comes walking to me and he looks worried because I think at this point he realized he's in trouble. He walks up to me and his arms are out like this and he's like, and all I see is jet black. I mean, his hands were covered. It looked like he had black gloves on up to here. So what happens when you mix a bunch of colors together, right? You get black. And he had played with those food colorings so much that all the colors had mixed together and both of his hands and his arms were solid black from the tips of his fingers up to his elbows. And I had this moment of panic because you couldn't even see his fingernails. Every bit was black, every bit. And I was like, uh, yeah, you're right, Robin. It was not fun to clean up. There were many tears. And so he had this look of panic, like, I don't know what I've done and I don't know how bad this is. And I panicked because I'm like, what is on you? I started to freak out. So I quickly like sat him up on the kitchen counter and I took a picture of him because I was like, I'm probably gonna need this for later. I don't know if I was like, had this moment where like, this will probably be funny later or if I was like panicked and not sure if I was gonna have to show it to a doctor. I don't know why I took a picture, but yes, I do have pictures, Joanne. Um, I'll post them to stories later if I can think of it. Uh, but anyways, I... <laughs> I put his arms underneath the kitchen sink and as the water started to hit the colors on his arm, they started to spread out. And of course, all the colors started to separate and like blue was going in the sink and purple and pink. And of course, what color out of all the food colorings sticks the best? Red. So when he was done, like when we rinsed him completely off, all that was left was like fuchsia, like a magenta color. So I had to put him in the bath. I think he even had some on his face, he like just little dots of it. And so I had put him in the bathtub to wash him. And for days afterwards, he was hot pink from here to here. He looked like a little, I don't know, like pink armed Oompa Loompa. <laughs> it was the weirdest thing, but 
we had many tears that night. I think I ended up like calling my mom in a panic crying. I'm like, mom, what do I do? Because you know what happens whenever you get food coloring wet or you try to clean it up, it just spreads. So anything we touched it with, any kind of spray cleaner, any kind of water, anything, it was causing the color to spread. I think we eventually just, um, I mean, we, we brought, <laughs> We've got pictures. We had an arsenal of cleaning supplies, everything from things that like are brake cleaner for your cars, all the way to like bleach and bathroom cleaner and anything we could think of. Nothing was working. Everything was making the water, the color spread. So we finally just threw a rug over it and said, we are done. And now that's Travis's bedroom. And Travis does have um, his bed covering up the worst area because there are like little colored dots. So if that part of the floor were ever to be, um, like shampooed, that color would spread even worse. So that is just the worst story. It's not even, not the only story. I have other stories about him, but that is the worst thing he ever did at that age. And so imagine me in 2013, I was only 28 at the time. And April said, my two year old son did the same thing. Oh, really? I have never met another mom whose kid did the same thing. Hang on, let me see if your story's worse than mine. She said he did red food coloring all over him, his bedroom wall, the floor, his bedspread. I have a picture. I'll text you. It was like a murder scene. Please send me pictures. I need to feel better about myself and my situation. I'll, t I'll text you pictures back if I can find them of Brett. They're on Facebook somewhere in my profile. But anyways, imagine me, 28 years old. I barely know how to adult, let alone like be alone at home with two kids by myself. And I was home with them all day, every day, because they weren't old enough, really. I mean, I think Travis was already in like first grade by this point, but Brett was not old enough to go to preschool yet. And so for the majority of the time, I was home with them by myself and there was nobody else in the house to talk to. And so if it wasn't for my mama calling me every single day and taking me out to lunch a couple times a week, I probably would not have survived. So I needed an outlet. This is where we get to the business part. <laughs> Sorry, I like took me like 10 minutes just to tell you the backstory. So I needed an outlet. I needed something that would make me feel human again, that would make me feel like a woman, like an adult, like a friend, not just mom, not just the person who's cleaning up the puke and the mess and all the, all the stuff kids get into. Hey, Lynette. Um, and so I had this idea. I don't even, I think I saw something on the internet. I don't even remember if it was on Facebook or Google or what. And it was talking about how people out in California were having Pinterest parties. And I was like, that's an interesting concept. And so I started reading about Pinterest parties and I don't even remember what kind of Pinterest parties they were, but it wasn't the kind that I ended up doing. It was like, I think it, it might've been like, it was kind of like back in the era when people like were obsessed with coloring. I know that's still a thing too, but it was like when everybody started getting obsessed with adult coloring. So they would have like an adult coloring party and you would get like coloring pages and everybody would sit around and color together. I don't know. It was this weird thing. But anyways, I saw the word Pinterest parties online and I was like, hmm, that sounds like fun. I was upset. Of course, you know, back in Pinterest is still a big, de big deal now, but in 2013, it was still relatively new. People were like obsessed with that's instead of scrolling TikTok or Facebook, that's what we did. We scrolled Pinterest. And so I had a bajillion craft projects in my Pinterest boards that I was could not wait to try. Hey Melinda, glad you're able to be with me tonight. Um and so I remember having this idea and I was like, okay, Pinterest parties. How could I make that happen? Like maybe? Because <laughs> how do you get people to your house, right? If you've got two little kids and you want people to come hang out with you, you feel like you need to have a reason people would want to come hang out with you, right? Because who else is going to come sit and hang out with you and your kids? <laughs> so I was like, okay, what if, what if I went on Pinterest and I found a cool project and I went out and bought all the craft supplies and I invited my friends over and we could do the project together. And then they would come hang out with me and I would be able to talk to adults and I would have fun and it would feel like I wasn't here by myself. <laughs> and so I loved crafting. Crafting with friends was even better. Um, let's see. Amanda says, I'm at that place being a uh, grandmother since our daughters moved back in. Oh goodness, Amanda, I feel for you. Rachel said, I still, <laughs> I still scroll Pinterest more than anything else. How many of you still do that? I scroll TikTok more than anything else. But anyways, so I, I don't even remember who I reached out to first. I think what I did was I set up like a little Facebook event because that's what you do when you want to have a party, right? I set up a Facebook event and I think I put a picture in there of, 
what was our first project? I think it was a burlap door hanger. And I, it was like a, like a watermelon shaped burlap door hanger made of burlap material. And I had never made one of these before, but I was like, I can probably figure that out. I'm that kind of person, right? If I see a picture of something and I like can kind of guess what the supplies are, whether there's a tutorial or not, I can usually figure it out. And so, um, <laughs> Stephanie loves Pinterest and so does Laura. Awesome. Um, and so I had posted that we were going to do a burlap door hanger. At the time, I didn't even know they were called door hangers. I think I just knew it was something that would hang on your door. Rachel said she started with burlap door hangers too. That is so cool. But anyways, I went and invited like some friends from church, some friends from um, school, you know, just, I don't know who, who, all my other mamas. That's pretty much what it was. Almost every person I invited was another mom. And so the thing was, is not only could they come and paint with, or paint with me, not only could they come and craft with me. Here comes Charlie. Yes, dear. How are we going to drive to church now? Well, we're not driving to church until in the morning. And we can drive to church in the rain if it's still raining tomorrow. Know, She's concerned because it's but raining. can you drop us under the... Well, Daddy can. Daddy will be driving. Yeah, hey, I'm on Facebook Live. Go out. <laughs> um, hey oh, Charlie wants to say hi. Okay, now go on out. Hi. Um, Nancy said, I started an article, what is this thing called Pinterest and why can't I stop? <laughs> oh, goodness. Anyways, um, I think I had like 10 ladies say, yeah, that sounds like fun. I want to come. And so I told them, no worries. You don't have to get a babysitter. Bring your kids. They can play with my kids. We'll send them to the playroom and they can have a big blast. Well, that was great because it meant they didn't have an excuse not to come if they, you know, if they could bring their kids. So they were all about that. The only downside to that part of it is at the end of the parties, there was always a wreck in the playroom because like 10 kids had been back there playing. And so it was a big mess to clean up after every party, but it was worth it. It meant that I got a two hours with some friends and I felt like an adult. And so the other cool thing about those parties was, is I would tell everybody to bring a, a, a meal, like a, not a meal, like a, a dish, like a, an appetizer or a dessert or something. And I tried to put the caveat on there that it needed to be a brand new recipe you'd never made before um, from Pinterest. And so they had to go on Pinterest, find a new recipe, learn how to make it. Cause a lot of us were like 30 and younger. We were all young mamas. We barely knew how to cook. And so having, ex having an excuse to try a new recipe from Pinterest was a great idea. And then at the parties, we would have those recipes printed out and we would hand them out to each other. And then of course we would go online and pin them on Pinterest. So that was the very first paint party I ever had. Um, I actually made my watermelon burlap door hanger like the day before or the day of the party before everybody got there. Cause I was like, mm, I probably need to like figure that out how to make this so I can teach everybody. And then once everybody got there, I kind of taught them how. So we each gave them a piece of burlap. We had them draw out the shape of the design they wanted. Some of them did watermelons. Some of them did like a monogram letter and uh, somebody did like a flower. I don't even remember. But it was a great party. We had so much fun and we took pictures. And then when the party was wrapping up, they're like, when are we going to do this again? And I'm like, oh, cool. They want to do it again. So the next month or like the very next day, the next week, I started looking for more ideas of like what else we could do at the next party. So for the next year, pretty much almost a whole year because my husband was on and off again deployed um, for the next year. We met every month at my house to make another project. We did paracord bracelets one night. We did uh, those stretchy headbands that are made like with ribbon right across here. We did our own DIY laundry detergent one time, which that party in and of itself was, um, that was a doozy because I ended up getting a stomach bug halfway through the party. I had to go lay down and my friend Christy had to take over and can finish wrapping it up, teaching, clean up and send everybody out so that I could rest. It was awful. But fast forward about a year later, my husband comes home from deployment. And so with the party stop and um, there was about a year later and um, we had gotten really used to the extra income we had while he was deployed. And so it was difficult um, to be able to survive on a single income after he got home because the income had, had decreased since he was not deployed. And so he's like, you know, babe, I think you're going to have to like maybe get a job or something. And I'm like, but how? Because what am I going to do with the kids? Like, I, you know, somebody's got to stay with our kids. 
And so I started putting in uh, applications all around town. I didn't know if I was going to be working at Walmart or, you know, the local clothing store or where. I put in applications a lot of places and I even went for a few interviews. But during that process, we also took a quick family vacation to Florida. And while we were there, um, I had this idea because I saw somebody else on Facebook go to a paint party somewhere and it wasn't in somebody's home. It was like at a like a, I don't know, like a fellowship hall or something. And I saw people go to this party and I noticed that they were all painting wooden door hangers. Now I forgot to mention in our Pinterest parties before we had painted, I think at least two wooden door hangers in that year. We painted one that was a snowman. That was my very first wooden door hanger ever. That's what taught me to use the jigsaw. And then the second one we did was the following spring. We did a chick popping out of an Easter egg. And so those two Pinterest parties were like everybody's favorite. That was the thing that like, they were like, when are we going to do another door hanger? They loved those above everything else. And so I had seen that somebody online had had a paint party and they were using wooden door hangers. I'm like, well, that's cool. She's doing that for a business. Now, mind you, when I did the print, blah, when I did the Pinterest parties in my home, I wasn't making any money. I was only charging people at the party enough to cover supplies. So if I figured out, I like, you know, took all the supplies, divided it by 10 people or however many could come, you know, and everybody paid their part. So I wasn't making any extra money. So I was like, hmm, you know, if I started doing door hangers and doing this like a Pinterest party, but in other people's homes, um, I could probably, you know, actually make some money at this. And so all of a sudden, while we're on vacation, I made a business plan. <laughs> and by business plan, I was just like, I'm going to do parties. This is how many people are going to come to the party. And this is how much I'm going to charge. And, um, let's put a Facebook post up <laughs> because if you know me, I wing a lot of things. I just wing it I, and I'm on a hope and a prayer. <laughs> and so, um, see if I have any questions. Cause I feel like I'm just totally rambling and I don't know if you guys have stopped commenting or if Facebook stopped showing them to me, but I'll pull it up on here just to be sure that I can see your comments. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, I ended up doing a post while we were in Florida that I was going to start doing paint parties. Now, the thing was, is while I had been doing the Pinterest parties in my home, people who are outside of my current friend group that didn't come to the Pinterest parties normally were like, this is so cool. I wish I could come to one of these. And so they had kind of like become aware that I was like the crafting gal. I could teach everybody how to craft, you know? And, um, Nancy says, we're listening. Thank you. I just don't think it was showing me a lot of your comments, so I can see them now. Kelly says, you need to take a sip of something. I gotcha. <laughs> Marina says, this is so much better than my Hallmark movie. Probably less predictable, too. <laughs> okay, um, so everybody kind of got to know me as the Pinterest party gal. And so when I put out a post on Facebook that, hey, I'm starting this new business, I'm going to do door hanger paint parties, and I can come to your home, I could come to your church fellowship room, I can meet you at a restaurant, all you got to do is gather up some of your friends, have them sign up, and then they're going to pay this much, and, um, you know, everybody will leave with a cute door hanger. And so I posted, I think, a few pictures for people to choose from. And they were my own like photos, ones that I had like painted, I think at the Pinterest parties. Plus when I got home from vacation, I painted a few samples. I like a, a mason jar and a sunflower. Uh, back then the one that was a baseball plate that said all about that base. I had that one. And so I had four or five and it wasn't long until I was, I had a couple of people who were like, Hey, I want to do this. And it was usually those people who didn't get to come to the Pinterest parties at my house that were like, I would love to do this with my friend group. And I'm going to, you know, invite some people, my coworkers, and we're going to get together at my house. Thank you, Diane. Um, and so we had our first paint party and I think there were six or seven people there. I gave them two choices. They could paint a mason jar or a sunflower. And uh, I, I had planned on like painting the example and then walking around to check on everybody. But it, I learned that like my teaching style works better if I just walk around giving instructions rather than stand at the front of the classroom. I think people like it better that way. <laughs> Tammy, I, my, I must be frozen. Just like swipe to, to close your app and relaunch it. Anyways, uh, that was in February 2015. What I failed to mention 
during all of this was that I was pregnant with Charlie when I had this idea. I had gotten pregnant with Charlie during the year after my husband came home from deployment. And so at this point, when I started my business, I think I was seven months pregnant. Who starts a business when they're seven months pregnant? I'm crazy, I know. And so there were several paint parties where I had a big old belly. One paint party, I even leaned over the table to help somebody. And as I leaned, my belly landed in somebody's plate of black paint. And when I stood up, the plate was stuck to my stomach and they were like, oh. and so I had to wash my shirt out and everything and it was fine, but it was kind of funny and embarrassing at the same time. Oh, my phone is going to try to die on me. No, no, no. Hang on. Let me, hang on. I got a charter. We don't want it to die in the middle of my story. Here it is. Let me plug this charger up. Hold please for this quick commercial break. Okay, we're in business. We got power. <laughs> what you need, son? Can I tell that Oreo pudding stuff? Please. Yes, it's in the refrigerator. Uncle Corey says hi. Travis just walked in asking for dessert, Corey. Boo, you came. <laughs> Charlie came in here a minute ago, but she's already run back out. Where was I in my story? Thank you, dear. I love you. Um, I was telling about... This was, oh, when I was pregnant. <laughs> I'm so glad you're enjoying this, Beulah. Uh, so yeah, I was pregnant. My, my parties had kind of picked up a little bit, but Charlie was born April the 6th. So my first party was in February. And then I think I had two or three more in March. And then I put everything on pause to have Charlie. And then like two, maybe three weeks after having Charlie, I had another party. So I went right back into it. And then in um, July of that very same month, which heads up for any of you guys, yeah, Sonia, that was my oldest. That was not the, the coloring food kid. That was the oldest, Travis. He's a sweetheart. Um, and a goofball. What was I saying? Oh, but in July, for the heads up, for those of you who do this kind of business, mid-July is when these kind of businesses start to pick up. And then in August is the fourth quarter. And so things are not, oh no, wait, September, October, November, December. It's, it, to me, it's like pre-fourth quarter, I guess. I always say August is the fourth quarter, but it's not. It's really not. But anyways, business is going to start picking up in August. If you've started a business like this, you're going to be busy, busy in August and really busy in September. And it's just going to keep going till Christmas. Anyways, July, I suddenly got calls and I was getting two or three more parties at the end of July. By August, this was only six months, uh, seven months after starting my business, I had 12 parties booked that month. Now, I was charging $25 per person at each party, and by this time, I think I had an eight-person minimum, which meant that at every party, I would make a minimum of $200. Was that right? $200? I'm terrible at math. Yeah, I think it's $200. Uh, but anyways, I thought that was just fantastic. I was like so, so thrilled because I'm cutting all my own blanks. My costs are very minimal. It was easy money. I was able to make my own schedule. I was able to be home with my own kid, my kids and everything. It was awesome. Becky, I am located between Murray uh, and Benton, Kentucky, Western Kentucky area. And so this was back in 2015. And so I did paint parties um, every single month. It always slowed down like in... February, March, April, sometime around in there. And then after May, it would start to pick up back up again. But it was always slow in the spring, which was kind of nice because in the springtime, baseball season's going on and my boys were playing baseball. So this kind of business worked out perfectly for me. And the only way I advertised was I would take pictures at all of my paint parties. I would make everybody hold up their door hanger and smile and I would take a picture of each individual. I would try to get a group shot if I could. And at the end of the night, I would come home, I would post the pictures on Facebook, tag the hostess in the post and say, thank you so much, Linda, for hosting a party. We had such a great time tonight, blah, blah, blah. If anybody um, would like to do a party like this, let me know. I would do a post like that and then I would private message the host and I would say, hey, Linda, do you mind checking out the photos I just posted? I would love if you could share them to your profile because they're posted on my business page, right? And people don't see stuff as well on business pages as they do on profiles. So they would share my um, business profile. I mean, sorry, my business page post to their profile and then we go tag their friends. I was ask, I would ask them to tag their friends. That way everybody could see their photo. And so this started to generate lots of new people to follow my page. 
and a lot of new local people who were interested in what I was doing. So now my circle of people who knew about me and my business started to expand. Every party I had, more people started to find out about me because of social media. I would post a picture of the party. They would see all their little friends that were at the party that they didn't get to go to. And then it was like, hmm, I'm gonna check this girl out. They would go to my page and look around and see what all we had. And next thing you know, my calendar is booked full. And so this went on for, I guess a year and a half. It was probably about the fall of 2016 before Facebook Live became a thing. And so I tried out Facebook Live and really, the reason I did the Facebook Live to start with was for the very same reason that I was doing the Pinterest parties in the beginning. And you, you remember what I was telling you about the Pinterest parties. I did it for social reasons. I felt like I needed somebody to talk to besides my kids. <laughs> I needed to stay busy. And so um, while I was painting late at night, trying to get orders done, because in the midst of doing all these paint parties, I was also selling painted door hangers. I did a lot of baby door hangers for like the hospital door or for nurseries. Um, and so while I was painting orders, I was like, hmm, let's see what Facebook Live is about. I'll just turn it on, see what happens. And what started to happen was people who had come to the paint parties locally were showing up on my lives and commenting. And so it was really cool because I could be like, oh, I see that Donna is watching. Hey, Donna, how's it going? How are the kids? And I would have conversations with those people. They would comment and ask questions and I would reply. And we would have a conversation going just like we would at a regular paint party. Hang on, Charlie has come in again. Yes, dear. So we're playing a game. You don't have to get up. You just have to look. Oh, honey, I can't play a game right now. I'm telling them. I'm telling them no, a story. No, you don't have to get up. I don't need close to get. Close your eyes. I just, okay, I've got to close my I'll eyes. Tell you when I'm ready. Okay, what's the surprise? Uh, I can't tell you. No, I don't. Okay. Hang on, you've got to introduce yourself. Look. Charlie. This is the one I was telling you about. I'm that Billy made, Bob. No, this is Brett, the middle child who made the mess with the food coloring. I was telling him that story. And the poop. He's an angel now, but he was a terror at three. Okay, Charlie, what's your surprise? I'm closing my eyes. Okay, it's over here somewhere. Where? I can't get up and come look at it. Okay. Oh, she made me a card. Look. Mom is the best. Dad is the best. No, ever. Oh, the best ever. You're so good at that. Thank you. I gotta go. All right, y'all get out. I'm telling a story. <laughs> Okay, hang on. I saw a question real quick. What a great idea, stay-at-home moms. Yeah, they do. Um, <laughs> Patty, it is, uh, it's only like 8.30 here, so we're in central time. Um, and then, let's see. Chessie said, how many parties were you doing a month when you were booked up? So, in August of 2015, I had 12, but that month, I decided 12 was like too much for me because in between the parties, I'm like having to you know, get my supplies together, make sure I got enough stuff. I'm having to cut all the wooden blanks. I'm having to deal with all the conversations in every Facebook event that I had set up to make sure everybody knew where to be, what time, and like I knew what door hanger they wanted to paint and all that stuff. And so 12 was too much. So I think I started capping myself out at eight or 10. So you have to do it, you know, according to your own schedule and what you're able to handle. And so two a week uh, was more than enough for me. And um, I think I eventually ended up increasing my price to $35. And, and but, but before I increased my price, I ended up increasing my uh, minimum number of people needed for a paint party. So I increased it to like 10, I think. And then eventually increased my price to, to $35. Melissa says, I'm a stay-at-home mom for seven and a half years. My husband's a trucker and is gone all week. It is tough. It is so tough. We, you know, I think you have to be very resilient <laughs> to do that. Uh, Doreen says, what was the best evening during the week or did you do weekends? I did, I usually did one weekend party if I could help it. Like, unless I did like a Friday night and a Sunday afternoon. Um, but I wouldn't do Friday and Saturday night. I tried to, you know, have some boundaries and reserve some of that time for my family and my husband. And then through the week, I would do like a Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday night. And so I would usually only book um, one or two of those, like two or three of those days a week. I wouldn't go over that. Uh, thank you, Sonia. Okay, so where was I in my story? We we're talking about Facebook Live. So, um, I would go on Facebook Live. I would chat back and forth. And it was just like the conversations we would have at the paint parties. Well, in that process of doing that, um, I started to get more orders for door hangers because it started to expand. 
uh, my customer base, people who didn't know me, had never been to one of my parties before, would start watching uh, me paint online and they would start asking questions and then they would say how can I order one of these and people who had ordered the actual door hanger that I was painting loved getting to see like behind the scenes in the process of me making it and so a lot of times when I was painting somebody's project that person would be watching live and so it was a really cool interaction we would have back and forth um, and then let's see so this was like 2016 to 2017 uh, somewhere along the lines, um, I'll answer your question in a second, Tricia. Somewhere along the line through there, though, it transitioned from doing Facebook Live for interaction and answering questions and for social reasons um, to I started dropping little tips here and there. But, you know, naturally, when people are watching, you've got a mix of people, right? You've got the people who are never gonna really wanna paint. They just wanna watch you paint and they wanna buy what you're making. And then you've got the people like me who are crafty, who are like, hmm, how's she doing that? What kind of wood is she using? I wonder what kind of paint she uses. What kind of brushes that she's got? You know, all those questions were coming up and people were asking and they started asking and asking and I just started, at, you know, like I'm an open book. You guys ask me something, I'm, I answer anything. And back then, people who were painting door hangers were not answering questions like that. If you asked another door hanger painter back then, um, what kind of wood do you use? You would get the answer, oh, I'm sorry, I don't share that information. And so the fact that I was coming live and answering any question they asked, I feel like really helped me stand apart from all the other door hanger painters on Facebook. Not to mention I was one of the first ones that was doing Facebook live. Um, there were all, all the other ones that I was aware of did not start painting door hangers on Facebook live until much later. Um, going back to Trisha's question, she said, how long were your paint parties? Um, so, it depends when you're talking about. In 2015, uh, when I first got started and I hadn't streamlined how I did things, those parties could last four, four and a half hours. And those poor women, uh, they were having a blast. Like they were there for the same reasons I was, to interact, to have social time. So they were grateful to be there. But some of them like halfway through would be like, Oh goodness, I didn't realize it was 9 p.m. I bet my husband's wondering like why I'm not back home yet. <laughs> and so they'd be getting calls from their husbands, honey, are you okay? And she's like, oh yeah, it's just taking longer than I thought. And I think like I have like an overabundance of patience. And so I was just letting people paint and letting people talk and letting people just take up all the time they wanted. Well, after a while I realized like for my sanity and for the benefit of the customers, I need to figure out a way to like streamline things so they aren't lasting so long. So I came up with a few little tips and tricks, started carrying a hair dryer with me because watching paint dry takes a lot of time. Um, and once I started doing that, my parties started getting shorter and shorter. And then they were from an average of about two and a half to three hours at most. Um, Oh, Linda, that is so sweet. She said, you've been my saving grace. I retired and lost my mama and you've taught me to do something that creates an escape for me. Thank you so much, Linda. I appreciate that so much. I know a lot of our Painters Clubhouse members feel that way too. They, um, they feel like painting is an escape. And when you're a mom, like a stay-at-home mom, and you need a mental break, you need to feel like somebody other than mom for a few minutes, even if you're just sitting down and painting to yourself and just like enjoying the process, when you're done and you have something physical to show for that time, it makes you feel like you were still productive. You weren't wasting your time, but you had something beautiful and physical to show for that amount of time that you spent. And so it's very validating and very fulfilling to paint. So if you haven't found that fulfillment in yourself, I want to encourage you to go check out Painters Clubhouse. It's opening August 23rd. I'm not done with my story, by the way. It's opening August 23rd. I did put a link in the description for you guys, or you can go to straight to southernadornmentsdecor.com. Um, there's a page that tells all about our membership, Painters Clubhouse, and we teach you door hanger painting every single month, even if you have zero experience. So that's my little pitch. Um, Robin says, you were the first person I started watching, and I loved watching you paint today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Kathy, that was so sweet. She said, I'm impressed with you already, and she's not even crafting. Um, Renee has been watching me for a long time. She said, I remembered your first ones. You looked so scared. I was, I was terrified. Um, the very, very first Facebook live I ever did, I was making a bow and my phone 
fell forward. Like I had it propped up against something and it just tipped forward twice during the Facebook Live. And many of you guys here right now found me through that video because I uploaded it to YouTube. It's how to make a door hanger bow. And so, so many of you have come over and found me here. So that video is still alive and well and kicking over on YouTube after all this time. Um, the door hangers are new to you, but you do glitter tumblers. Oh, Amanda. Well, door hangers could be a new, like, you know, venture for you if you want to learn how to do that. We have had people in our painter's clubhouse apply the painting techniques they learn to the tumblers. So, keep that in mind. Okay, so back to the story. <laughs> so, during all this time of doing Facebook Lives, I started dropping, you know, information about what kind of wood I use, what kind of paint I use. Oh, this is the kind of brush I use. And I would hold it up and I would show them and I would kind of explain what I was doing. So, naturally, I think in my DNA, I am just a teacher. And it just started to spill out of me, whether I meant for it to or not. So, for a good year and a half, really, I was just giving it away on every Facebook Live, telling anybody anything they wanted to know, but I didn't really have a way for people to like go deeper with me and learn more with me on a more personal basis, right? And so um, I tried experimenting in the fall of 2017 with a virtual paint party. And so I would mail people the wooden blanks and I would teach them how to paint that project each month inside a private Facebook group. And that worked out pretty good for a while. I think we had about 50 to 60 people at most in there. And I was thrilled with that. I was like, this is incredible. Like all I have to do is ship them a piece of wood and I have to show up and paint. And it's like, I was getting to live my dream. It was amazing. But the problem that I started to notice was, was people are very capable. And these women that I was teaching to paint didn't need for me to ship them a piece of wood, right? They knew how to cut their own wood. They're very crafty ladies. They just wanted to learn how to paint. And so I had already kind of dabbled with how to make a template because let me tell you how we made templates back in the day. And if you don't know what a template is, it's the paper, uh, stencil, uh, shape, what am I trying, what's the word, pattern that we use. We lay it on our wood, we trace it out, and then we cut it out so that all of our door hangers of that type are the same shape and size. Hang on, let me go back and read some of your questions. Susie says, I'm having a hard time painting details. I'm heavy handed, so it makes it hard. Don't give up, Susie. It does get easier. Um, I will say, I don't know if you've heard my tip or my technique, if you're doing a straight line or something where your hand is shaking, if you can position the door hanger in a way that you're pulling the brush toward your body, you're gonna have more control doing this motion because you can use your whole arm for stability, not just your hand, okay? So keep that in mind, maybe that'll help. Oh, thank you, Diane, you're so helpful. Or you're so helpful, you're so sweet. I was reading what you said, you said something about being helpful and I think it made me say the word helpful. Um, she said, I can verify how wonderful the group is by including the template club. Is in, If anyone's on the fence, join, you won't regret it. Nanette says, I have a hard time not detailing. Nanette, I'm kind of like that too. I always add way too much detail to my door hangers. And then I'm like, I could have been done with this 30 minutes ago, but I just keep, I, like I can't find a quitting spot. <laughs> Thank you, Alice. That is so sweet. I'm going to go back and read all of these comments, I promise. But I feel like I need to stay on track or I will never finish my story. Um, where were we? <laughs> Hang on. Okay, we were talking about the virtual paint parties. So we did virtual paint parties from September 2017 um, until March 2018. So somewhere around Christmas, I started to realize, during, you know, during this time, I started to realize that a lot of the ladies in my virtual paint parties wanted to be able to cut their own shapes. And I had, like I said, already started to dabble with the idea of making templates. And back then, nobody was selling door hanger templates. Those weren't a thing. And so I was like, okay, there's gotta be a better way because if I'm gonna teach a group, a Facebook group, how to paint a bunny rabbit door hanger, what if people in that group can't draw a bunny rabbit? Because back then, the main problem that door hanger painters had, or no, hang on. The main problem that crafters had was they wanted to learn to paint door hangers, but they couldn't even draw a stick figure. How many of you guys have thought that or said that? I know I've had so many of you guys tell me that. You're like, but I can't paint. I can't even draw a stick figure. Well, people could not, um, uh, people could not 
draw the bunny, right? Like they couldn't replicate the exact bunny that I was gonna teach. So I had to figure out a way to be able to give them the pattern for the bunny that I was gonna be using. And so I figured out a way to digitally like create those. And then <laughs> a lot of you guys are raising your hands. Uh, you're not alone, just look in the comments. Uh, thank you for the stars, guys. You are so, so sweet. Um, so I figured out how to make the templates and I started listing the templates on my website for sale at $5 each. And so the people in my virtual paint parties were not getting these digital templates. They were getting the wooden piece mailed to them. But there were several people who were like, I would love to join, join your virtual paint party, but I cut my own wood. And so I'm like, well, how could I make like a paint party like each month for people who can cut their own wood? And so I started brainstorming. And of course I, you know, went on a trip to Florida like I do every year after Christmas. My grandparents had a place down there, by the way, and my mom and dad. And so, um, while I, I do my best brainstorming, I've decided in Florida, so maybe I just need to go on vacation more often. Um, so while I was in Florida, I started dreaming about how I could make this something that would best serve the people who watch me. And I came up with the idea for Painters Clubhouse. And so with Painters Clubhouse, we don't mail you something every month. We give you two digital templates that you can download the, and then we're going to teach you how to paint those. And so one is always taught by me. One is taught by a guest painter. And then we also have like bonus things in there um, where we'll teach you like a technique or we'll teach you hand lettering or bow making or whatever it is that you guys are wanting to learn. And so we launched that. We opened it for the first time in April 2018. And we instantly had 400 people join. Think about that for a minute. I started out Hang on, how many people did I have on my Facebook page back then? I'm trying to think. I think I had about, at this point, 15,000, which was amazing. Like, I was blown away because the previous fall, I think we only had like 7,000. So, we had grown. I think I had finally started to run some Facebook ads at this point, And I was like $5 a day was what I was spending or something. And so we finally started to grow our page a little bit. And so back in the fall, we had had about 50 people in the virtual paint party group. And then in the spring, when we launched Painters Clubhouse, we did away with the virtual paint party. And we invited all of those people to come and join us for Painters Clubhouse. And we got 400 people to join. So if I had never changed things and I had just continued to do things the way I was doing, um, I would have been leaving 350 people out there who were potentially ideal customers. So, you know, I guess the lesson in all of this is to like listen to your audience. Who is watching you and what are they asking for? What are they wanting to learn from you? And just figure out a, a way that you can provide that and enjoy what you do. Nancy says there's so much content you'll never get bored. Yeah, so three years later, three and a half years later at this point, we have so much in the Painters Clubhouse. There are so many tutorials, so many free templates that you can go in there and download and get started. It's literally the Netflix of door hangers and you'll never get bored. Um, you'll always have a project that you can be working on. And something fun that I just announced to the Painters Clubhouse yesterday that we're gonna start doing is um, every, uh, not every single month, but certain months when we don't have a workshop going on, we're gonna do something called a remix tutorial. And I'm gonna take an old template, an old design from the Painters Clubhouse, and I'm gonna remix it. And I'm gonna teach it in a different way, in a different style, maybe a more modern style. And so that's like a bonus piece of content everybody's gonna be getting every single month, or not every single month, every, because <laughs> some months we have workshops. Like in August, we're having a workshop, which you guys are gonna hear about next, on, or on Monday. So stay tuned for that announcement. Um, but we're going to have a workshop for how to paint a double-sided fall door hanger. One side's going to have a pumpkin. The other side's going to have a turkey. And so all of our Painters Clubhouse members are going to get to participate in that for free. And so here we are, three and a half years later. I have over 1,500 members in there. So many of them have started their own businesses. And so then we had to solve that problem for them. They needed a business coach. And I love talking about business and helping people with their business. So I started Paint to Profit. It's like the next step in Painters Clubhouse. And they don't have to leave Painters Clubhouse to join Paint to Profit. It's just the next step. And so they stay in Painters Clubhouse, but then they get this additional business training if they would like it. And so um, I'm just, I'm so grateful that I get to do this every, you know, every day. And it's something that I'm passionate about. I love helping people. I love encouraging people and teaching. And I just, I don't know, it lights me up. <laughs> okay, let me see if I missed any questions. 
Jenny said, have you always been a painter or did you just teach yourself a few years ago? So Jenny, the day that I painted that burlap door hanger I was telling about at the beginning of this story, I think that was like one of my first major paint pro painting projects. I had painted furniture a little bit before, but I had never painted anything. Um, I hadn't painted much that was like crafts. But I was telling my friends this a while back and they were like, no, but remember like in high school, <laughs> you made like those acrylic um, picture frames and you painted little sunflowers on them. So I think I always dabbled with stuff, but I would definitely have never called myself a painter. I would have called myself a crafter. Like I'm, I'm crafty. I did scrapbooking and all kinds of stuff. Uh, let me see if I missed any questions. When or how much is it to join Painters Clubhouse? Um, the pricing is over on the page, Donna, if you want to go check it out, but it's $47 a month, but you also get a discount if you pay monthly. Uh, Catherine says, I can't believe it's another year for me in Painters Clubhouse. Oh, goodness, is it coming up on your anniversary? Did you join in August of last year? Uh, Sonia says, it shows in your face when you light up when you talk. Oh, thank you. Uh, Marilyn's been in the clubhouse since day one. She said, I haven't done every tutorial. I'm still learning. There is so much. So don't like feel like you're not getting your money's worth if you can't watch it all. Because I've always told everybody, if you just paint one door hanger a month, it's worth it because you're gonna make progress doing that. And so, um, you know, if you sell one door hanger a month, it's pretty much paying for itself. It's a no brainer. Um, thank you for sharing your story, Amanda says. Did you get to tour the new woodcutter can't remember the name. Um, it was supposed to come Friday, but then we got a call and said that the truck driver wasn't going to be able to bring it till Monday. So my new Thunder Laser is coming Monday. Um, Catherine says, yes, ma'am, still do more to do. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Let me scroll back and see if I missed any questions. Um, when does August Template Club arrive? Should be Sunday or tomorrow. Today's Saturday. It should be tomorrow. Yes. Jay has been wanting a double-sided door hanger. Well, we've got just the thing. Um, I think I've got all the questions. I don't think I missed any. I'm going to scroll back through and read y'all's comments because I know a lot of you guys shared your stories with me in the comments and let me know like how long you've been painting and what painting means to you. And I appreciate that. So I'm going to go back through and read those, but I do feel like I'm beginning to lose my voice. So I probably should wrap it up, but no worries. I'm going to be back live with you guys again tomorrow because somebody wanted to know how I seal my door hanger. So I'm going to go live and share, um, some tips for sealing door hangers with you guys. So come back and join me tomorrow. Um, you can text me at this number if you want to be notified when I go live tomorrow because I don't know what time it'll be yet. I think we're going to go to the movies together as a family after church. So um, it'll probably be late afternoon. Um, what if you don't cut your own wood? Is there template? Is templates the only thing you offer? No, we have wooden door hangers in our shop. Go to shopdoorhangers.com. We have over a thousand designs to choose from and each one comes in four different sizes. Um, no, Jerry, we haven't gotten our, our concrete slab poured yet. She's asking about our workshop that we're building on the back part of our property. It's going to house industrial size laser machines and my husband's going to take over that side of the business. So I'm so excited about that, but we're waiting on our concrete slab to be poured so they can start the walls. I feel like all it is, is just waiting, waiting, waiting. And I don't have very much patience. Did your husband ever doubt starting a business? Yes. Maybe that should be a story for another night. He, I think he, he didn't doubt me. He doubted how stable the income could be because he could see that like some months I made more than other months. And so he felt like it wasn't a reliable income. He knew it was real income, but it was, it wasn't like I was never making the same amount every month. And so that for him didn't mean stability. Whereas I was like, well, I know I can make at least this much, <laughs> you know, so all right, you guys have a great night. I will see you tomorrow afternoon. Thank you guys so much for hanging in here with me. I'm quite a lengthy storyteller. <laughs> Good night, guys. Bye.